Yeah, you weren't jolly enough, so here you go. We're gonna disembowel you and stuff you with trash. Let's get this shit over with. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the triad where we're spooky but sensitive. I am Shelby. I'm Hannah. I'm Shannon. Cool. Cool. Do we have any announcements uh, since we recorded announcements? yesterday? No. No. You're ill. I think that's one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just like one half of my face is completely blocked up. Which I hate. Yeah. Like, I would rather it be both. Yeah. But one is perfectly clear and dry, and the other one is... I don't know. That's so <laughs> annoying. I hate when it's just one nostril. Also, right before this, um, I was watching the movie Wind River. Have you guys ever seen it? No. No. I was literally in the middle of a giant gun battle, and then <laughs> you were like, time to go! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm... My, my thoughts are elsewhere right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have been like, hey, wait until the scene is over. Well, <laughs> then I never would have stopped watching it. That's yeah. true. And you're the one who needs to go to bed. So it's true. Yeah. I did take a nap. So, well, that's good. that's good. I'm better off than it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't have to clean it up poop from two toilets and a sink and an entire floor today so that's always an improvement (laughs) my friend just told me she's gonna be out tomorrow so i'm gonna be with a hard kid all day (laughs) oh i applied for a job Ooh. um to work as an adjunct professor of fiction in an mfa program that would be fun that is my dream job, except for the adjunct part, but you got to start somewhere. So I mean, right? Yeah. It, would mean, it be a step up, stress wise, from the current job? Oh yeah, because like so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because like adjuncts yeah we're like because I've been an adjunct before like you're definitely I was gonna say isn't that what you did when you were living Swick, here yeah. yeah 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 I was but I taught um I taught composition not fiction which is way different i hate composition yeah. no offense to all my rec comp friends but you know that you're trash um, <laughs> no offense but you suck ass <laughs> i didn't say that <laughs> your words not mine um no it's just boring as hell i just uh i don't know i would rather teach fiction i don't know the teach. difference so well it's, it's i'll just, just believe like, you it's okay, fine. fiction is writing like a story, and I know what fiction is. Composition I don't know, like... <laughs> is writing a fucking paper. Oh, like a research paper. That's all I do. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. <laughs> well, I can't write fiction, so <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, to um, each their own. I'll bleep it if you want to. But which university did you apply to? Oh, you don't have to. It's um, Southern New Hampshire University. Oh, okay, cool. It would be online. Yeah. Um, cool. Which I have taught online a little bit because COVID, so. Yeah. I mean. However, the only thing with this is I'm technically supposed to have, like, a book, uh, but. You kind of (laughs) do. I mean, I have a thesis that's book length. (laughs) Yeah. And it is published through the university, so technically, yes, I do have a book. I have two book length publications, so yeah. fucking come at me. But yeah. the only thing is, I don't have a lot of. Actually, I don't have any fiction published. I have a lot of poetry published. Uh, but anyway, this is not relevant. I, sorry. No, but it's cool. Oh, it is. Tidbit. Like, um, that's cool though. Like, good luck. I yeah. Hope. I hope it goes well. <sighs> yeah. Thanks. Me too. For sure. It's online, so, like, I mean, I wouldn't have an office, which would suck, but 
I wouldn't have to go anywhere, which would be so nice. Yeah, it's right? very nice. <laughs> I wouldn't have to wear pants. I could wear pajama pants because it would just be <laughs> online. Like, you could just hang like, out with Peppa all day, every day. This is yeah. Professor Peppa. That is how I introduced her when I started teaching online. I was like, all right, did everyone turn in your second project? Also, this is Professor Peppa. She will be leading class today. No one thought it was funny. I thought I was hilarious. <laughs> I think I would have been like, oh my god, I love your cat. Yeah. There were like two or three people who were who were like that, but then everyone else was like, can you just shut up and tell us like what we have to read for next week? No, yeah. shut the fuck up. I'm in charge. <laughs> I do what I want. I'm in charge. I'm trying to make this fun, this fun class. This class fun. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've Let's been working go. from home like a good chunk of the semester. It's very nice. I don't have to leave. God, I wish. I can play with the dog. I can like go get lunch without people throwing a hissy fit. I mean, I mean, not that my my supervisor does not care. She basically was like, even if you're all here for like four hours, you can take an hour for lunch. I really don't care. If you don't have anything to do, you don't have anything to do. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, last God, year we I had, wish. Last year we had Wednesdays off. Wednesdays were remote for the entire school district. And it was great because I would get everything done. Like, I'm not even kidding. I would get every single thing I had to do done by like 10 o'clock. Yep. And I just, like, hang out for the rest of the day. Yep. That's what I do. Clock out like, at most 3 of this, 20. Yeah. Most of this past week, because we were remote all last week, I was, like, I was, like, monitoring the reference desk email, basically. And so, like, I had a couple things come in, and then I had a project I was supposed to have been working on all semester, but I knew it was going to take me, like, half an hour to do, so I didn't do it until this past week. Uh, <laughs> so I did It took that her too. 20 minutes. 20 yeah. minutes. And I was supposed to have been working on it all semester, so it took me 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, working from home is nice. Um, a lot of schools are moving all online for next semester, or at least they're like considering it because of the new variant. Yeah, I was gonna um, say COVID's on the rise again, so like, yeah, this get winter's your vaccine, gonna be. Wash your hands, vaccine. wear a goddamn mask. Get yeah, your booster if you can. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, I spent all morning trying to find a booster, and... Why do you have so, so much gone, trouble? Have you just I gone on the, Walgreens, on the Walgreens website just to Shannon, see like, I have. what their openings are? Okay, I'm just yeah, wondering. Yeah, they are booked until, like, way the hell at the end of January. That's so and weird. That's crazy. Nothing, there's nothing nearby that has it. Like, I've looked, I've looked at Hannaford's, which is the grocery store. I've looked at CVS, Walgreens, um... Rite Aid, which is another, like, drugstore. Yeah. Um, literally everything. There is nothing within a 50-mile radius that will Jesus. let me get a fucking vaccine. And it's stressing me out because my parents are well, like, yeah. well, we kind of want you to be boosted because we're all boosted. I'm like, I want to be boosted, too. It's not like <laughs> I'm choosing not to. I've been looking. I got in one time, and then I had to put my phone down to help a screaming child. And when I picked it back up, my spot in line had been taken. Oh my god. god. It's just such a big yeah. fucking bummer. That's so nuts. Because, like, here, there are openings, like, every other day, probably. I was going to say, times mine was, like, a week out from when I made my appointment. Yeah, yeah. which is what I expected, but there's nothing mine until the end of January. Two I've looked days everywhere. Later. I, like, I keep going on the CDC I was website. Able to make an appointment. And then everything around me. Oh, that makes me so mad. I mean, I'm happy for you, but, like, it makes me no, mad at the system no, 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 up no. here. Yeah, that's so, that's just nuts. I mean, it's kind of like when I was, you know, when the vaccines first rolled out, I was still in Chicago and they didn't give Cook County more vaccines than every other county. (laughs) So. But there's like six (laughs) people in St. Clair County and then like a million, two million people in in Cook County. Yeah. So. (laughs) Yeah, that's why it took me so long to get vaccinated. At yeah. first, because there literally weren't any vaccines because they didn't give Chicago or Cook County any more than any other county in the state. Yeah. And I got That's vaccinated crazy. so fast because I worked for that um, company where I was in people's houses. Yeah. Because um, I was working with adults yeah. with disabilities. So a lot of them are immunocompromised. Mm-hmm. And so I was able oh, to get it. I, I got mine quickly because I was working as a substitute. So I was able to like list myself as a teacher. Mm hmm. Well, I am immunocompromised, so I could have gotten one almost immediately. There just literally weren't any. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I was fighting with every other person in the city, and... Yeah. (sighs) 
Yeah. But yeah, um, I've just seen a lot of projections that this winter is going to be worse than last year. So everybody, yeah. please just, at least in just the U.S., I can't speak for outside of it. Just be smart and be careful. Like, yeah. I know, I know we're all so tired of it. Oh, but... this is going to come out after Christmas. I got Thomas a mask. <laughs> and it says, because, you know, he's like a huge nerd and plays board games and like, he reads like rule books for fun, which is very cute. But it says on it, I read the rules so you don't have to. Ooh, I like that. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so wear a mask is what I was getting at with that. Yeah. Sorry, and I cut you off, Shannon. I apologize. No, you're fine. No, I don't even remember what I was saying. Um, yes, I do. Yeah, just like I know, I know it's frustrating and I know it sucks, but literally we don't have any other option. Yeah. Right. Like so, the longer you refuse to wear a mask or like are like, vaccine, I'm just tired of doing all of this. So I'm just not going to anymore. Like the longer people keep up that mentality, like the longer we're going to be in this <laughs> pandemic. So yeah. Remember how people were saying that back in like July of whenever this came out, 2020, 2020. not 20, when it came out, when it, when COVID <laughs> rolled in. <laughs> Um, <laughs> where like people were like, I'm just gonna go to a bar. It's fine, and it, like yeah. now we're in year three. Yeah, right. Uh, and I'm like, I yeah. I just can't help but keep thinking. Like, I get why back in the day people were always like, the war will be over by Christmas because they can't visualize it going any further. Because like whenever the thing first hit, we were all like, it'll be two weeks. It'll just be through May. It'll just be through the summer. And then by fall, we were like, wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that just always seemed like such a naive thing for people to think. But now I'm like, I kind of get it now. Like, yeah, that's, why it's people hard thought to that? think, <laughs> like, five years in ahead of time or even, like, two mm-hmm. years and be like, yeah, we're still going to be in a pandemic. Yeah. So, like. I was, I was just thinking the other day about how weird it's going to be to explain to, like, the next, like, the generation after the, I think they're calling them Generation C, which are kids born during COVID, that, mm-hmm. like. Yeah, all these pictures for these couple of years of us in masks, it's because we, the air was poison and (sighs) everything was terrible. And half the country was convinced that nothing was actually happening. Uh, Maybe not half anymore, but As someone who is, you know, like, putting in applications to go back to school so I can be a speech pathologist, like, they're already seeing the negative effects on, like, language acquisition in children yeah and it's only been like two years and like yeah even working in the daycare like with my when i was working in the daycare my two-year-olds once we started wearing masks their language dropped like immediately Mm -hmm. and so like it's gonna have and like you think about like the trauma that we have as like kids who grew up with like 9-11 and all of that like can you imagine the amount of like unconscious trauma that all of these kids are gonna have because of the stress levels for the last three years Mm -hmm. like it's oh yeah even like so bad yeah i mean i know there's just like i am obviously not a teacher but i know people who are and i'm on the internet all day every day um like there are so many teachers who are like i teach high school freshmen but they're they're in seventh grade mentally because of the pandemic like, they're going to yeah. be two years behind. And it's just like, how do you catch them up? Can you catch them up? Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, like, we tried so summer school, hard. but, like, it's Well, it's but really that's a hard. whole year of just, yeah. like, socialization that they didn't have. Yeah, and socialization right. is gone. And, like, socialization, that's so huge for kids and for Oh, my teenagers. God, yeah. I work and in the, especially the age like, group that starts I mean, the socialization process. Right? Yeah. And it's like that whole like their brains are still developing and that's basically like Mm -hmm. two years of stunted growth for them that wasn't like not their fault in any way no it's not not that it's anybody's fault but still like no but it's also just like we are not equipped to handle that yeah like we're not equipped to deal with it you know and then just yeah. like even for adults like there's so many people myself included whose attention spans have just been destroyed oh mine is completely because of the pandemic. gone like um yeah, like i can't. can't just sit and read a book anymore like all those books that i read this year the vast majority of them were audiobooks while i was doing something else because i literally cannot just sit and read a book and that's all i used to do 
Yeah. Like, that, like, yeah, yeah, I just, I can't do it. Or, like, even with, like, class, like, physically, like, I had one class that met in person this semester, and, like, part of it was that it was hella boring, but I was just the whole time, like, fidgeting, so I was like, I need to be doing something else to listen. You know what I mean? Because for the past year, all my classes were online. And I was always... I got really good at knitting. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, hell, I cross-stitched through most of my classes, you know? Like, at least the ones where I don't have to take notes. But, yeah, my... I know, at least for me, my attention span is horrible. And my patience for other humans, it already wasn't good. And it got worse. (laughs) Yeah. Like... Oh, it's horrible. My I'm patience like, for adults is terrible, but not for kids, just because... Yeah. They're kids. You can't yeah. work you can't. where I work and not be patient. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Which like, you have to I'm say like, 17 never. times, how old are you? Nope, that's not right. You're this old. See, I don't... How old are you? Say it again. I don't have that how to begin with, you? so... <laughs> I know. I don't think that could have gone away because it wasn't there to start with. Um, But, like, well, then I also just get frustrated because, like... You know, I go to Target, half the people in there now, ever since the new variant came out, fewer people are wearing their masks. Yeah. Came I out. know. What the but fuck you is know with what that? I mean. Like, at least that I've seen, because, like, it's not like I've been just sitting at home doing literally nothing. Well, like, I do and, go to the like, grocery my store thing and Target is, like, and it's like, yes, there's a new variant, and, like, <coughs> that is a factor, but, like, just in general, like, cases are on the rise. Like, even just, yeah. like, with me at work like we've had so many people out at work and Maine's had so many like deaths recently yeah like I saw something that and like my friend who's a nurse like she is back to like full like there's no beds in the covid ward and everything and like she yeah, is going home exhausted getting, like she can't hospitals are getting really full again yeah like she yeah can't take days off because they have no one to work because they're so busy with covid patients and they're having to like intubate people again yeah like it's bad cases again yeah yeah so maine has a really low population but we have a thousand new cases as of yesterday and that's Jesus. a shit ton. That's more than our. That's more than our peak. That's like how much Illinois has, and we yeah. have a shit ton more people than Maine yeah. does. It's crazy. Jesus, that's nuts. I wonder where it is. It's probably all down here in my county. Let's look. Probably Your just because there's going to be more people. Um, oh, no, we're doing pretty good. Can't be I a saw... rustic county. Ain't nobody lives up there. Hang on, let me try to find it. I saw a thing, but I don't know if it was in the U.S. or not. Here we go. Um, Yeah, the National Institute of Health director is retiring. He thinks we could see up to a million cases per day this winter. That's (gasps) crazy. That's horrifying. But I will... That scares me so much. um, I will say that, like, the company that I work for, like, if you are vaccinated and you have contact with someone who tests positive for COVID... You do not have to quarantine. So, like, if I came in contact with someone who has COVID and, like, prolonged contact, I would not have to quarantine and I could still mm-hmm. go to work because I yeah, am vaccinated. Yeah, the same with us, too. Which is yep. not how the vaccine works. Um, That yeah. might not be what the law in Illinois is. Uh, um, it, it's what we do in Maine. But it's... Yeah. But that's but what I they're don't... letting people come to work who have had contact and then people get it at work is that from corporate or from your direct managers that is from corporate okay no because because if we have contact we have to it's a completely different like we have to go through hr and like a health thing like we have to fill out like a health uh screening every single day did i tell you guys i took a covid test in the nurse's office the other day (laughs) yeah I, did. I mean the number I can't of times why, but I mean like all last guess. year because I worked with a group of like-minded people like I did not have to be tested for covid at all last year since I started this new job with my coworkers who refused to be vaccinated oh I have You've had to been be in contact so many I have been times. in contact so many times and I have been tested at least 4 times Yeah in the last like 
month or two, I have been tested four times because they, they're they yeah. just so... F- and they don't care. We're 20 minutes in and we haven't even... <sighs> I know. We needed to do this, yeah. though. Like, it's fine. Um, yeah, I don't know what the law is in Illinois, but, like, that might not go with what the law is in Illinois. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Because Illinois has, like, fairly strict. Yeah. Not even strict. They just have, like, sensible COVID restrictions. I don't think that they're... I don't think they're strict. We're just one of the ones who actually is following, like, recommendations from health officials. God forbid. Yeah. I know. Ugh. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, we started this, you know, a few months into the pandemic, this podcast, and I didn't... I, I mean, I didn't look that far ahead, obviously, but I, my brain is still just like, we're not in a pandemic, you know? And it's just, yeah. Everybody, please get boosted, boosted. I don't know which one is correct. Get your fucking booster vaccine and just, I don't know, <laughs> care about other human beings, maybe. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, it's not just about you. No, it's not. Oh, and then this comes out. This is the first episode of the year, so we're really kicking us off on a positive note. Um, (laughs) Happy New Year! But for Christmas, I need to ask my mom, because the people who are hosting our family Christmas this year are massive Trump supporters, and I don't know if they're vaccinated or not. I'm gonna go with no. And if they're not, I might not go, because, I mean, I don't want to anyway, because there's a whole lot of drama, and it's just already Come up to Vermont. We're uh, all vaccinated and most of us are boosted and we... <laughs> and you're welcome to come to my Bernie house. Sanders. We're all vaccinated and uh It literally... We'll no, it boosted. would just be like my mom's... It would be my mom's extended family. Yeah. Like, it's the with the big thing, which like, whatever. Yeah. Or like, I might go just to do the gift exchange because I did buy something for it today and then leave again. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know you and Allie like, are always welcome at my house, so... Oh, no, I know. We're going to walk in at some well, point. Well, yeah, because you want to see the kitten, see the kitten again. <laughs> Yeah, and your sister's there, and I haven't seen her in, like, two years. Right, so. same. I haven't met your sister. Oh, that's right, you haven't. Yeah. You would get along very well with Jessica. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have said that before. Honestly, yeah, Thomas would. would get along well with my sister. Yes. Yeah. Again, I don't know him, but... My sister is a From huge. What told us. Probably, <laughs> she's a huge history geek. Like plays D and D. Like would be my man. Yep. <laughs> so. Oh, I can now tell you this too because it's after Christmas. I got him this shirt. I think I sent you guys a picture of it. It says "History Nerd," but the I in history is a Civil War soldier. You did not show us oh, that, cool. but that's cool. You did anyway, not show I'm us that. That is cool, though. Best fucking girlfriend that ever was. Yes. He'll like it. He'll love <laughs> you it. You hand knit him socks. <laughs> yes, Period I'm actually finishing a pair. Socks. Period appropriate. They are <laughs> in the correct wool fashion. Yes. Um, oh okay. Uh, do we want to actually, like... I, I'm glad that we worked our way through that, because I feel like we were all getting very, like, stressed out from yes. everything happening. Um... Do we want to get to the actual topic now? Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Is it in the episodes folder, your research folder? Uh, it's in the episodes folder, but I did make a copy because okay. you said mine okay. keep getting deleted or whatever. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Oh, this is fun. Okay. I like this. This is Yeah. Fun. It's a simple, okay. easy topic. Like, nothing too in-depth. Yes. Um, Like, I don't go super in-depth into any of them, Um, but... We are going to be talking, because this is the first episode of the new year, we're going to be talking about New Year's traditions mm-hmm. from around the world. So, um, yeah, my sources are on my very last slide, but it's literally uh, Wikipedia and then, like, one website that had a list of, like, 20 uh, New Year's Eve traditions from around the world, and it was, like, bestlifeonline.com. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was a comprehensive enough list for this episode, because mm-hmm. I didn't want to do, you know, every country on the planet. Um, yeah, we don't want a repeat of the episode we recorded yesterday, <laughs> lengthwise. Yeah, so, <laughs> and, like... The canna would kill right? us. <laughs> well, I just was really tired, no, and I that know. was the day I started not feeling good. Yeah. That yeah. first one on there that I just sent you, I've been trying to buy, but it's been out of stock for a very long time, because that's his favorite brigade from the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> Yes, uh, my phone is on mute, so I will look at it later, but 
Um, but yeah, so we are talking about New Year's traditions from around the world. If you would like to go to slide two, um, and some of these are going to be like repeat countries. Um, again, like I just took them straight from that one website's list. I honestly didn't do much more into like other countries or just like other lists of traditions because I was like 20 is enough we're good um yeah sort of thing (laughs) um but yeah so the first one we're gonna be talking about is in Spain um and locals in Spain will eat exactly 12 grapes at the stroke of midnight um and this is it's a tradition that started in the 1800s, um, and basically it was, like, vine growers in the Alicant, Alicante, I don't know, um, area. They came up with this tradition as a means of selling more grapes toward the end of the year, um, but the celebration, like, caught on and people kept it up and everything, um, so today it is still done, um, they eat one grape for each um each like strike of the bell at midnight in the hopes that this will bring about a year of good fortune and prosperity Hmm. i'm sorry did you say something it like cut out on my end i said i said oh "Hmm." okay (laughs) you know Hmm. well because like with the way that Shannon and I record, we are in separate rooms in our apartment, but I have to have, like, one headphone on and one off, otherwise it, I, like, sound like I'm underwater and it, like, freaks me out, and so I can hear her through my door, um, so, like, I can hear when she's talking, but then it, like, didn't come through on the headphone and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Ah. So, um, yeah. but yeah. Okay, so slide three, then. <laughs> what happens when i'm super fucking loud and the door is i was gonna say it's not like we're that far apart our apartment is pretty small no (laughs) okay and i'm also (laughs) well yeah there's that Uh, (laughs) okay so slide three this is in scotland um and i don't know this picture is just so very scotland to me (laughs) but um (laughs) so the day Um, so New Year's Eve is important in Scotland, um, and there's even, like, an official name for it, and it is Hogmanay. Um, and there's, like, multiple different traditions, um, that they celebrate on this day. Um, I'm really only going to talk about one, um, but the origins of Hogmanay itself are unclear um there's a lot of like if you look at the wikipedia page for it like there's a whole bunch of like the etymology for the word could come from this or it could come from this or it could have been during this time period blah 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 and uh, yeah so anyway it is what it is um but it is most likely derived from um norse and gaelic observances of the winter solstice um And so there's, like I said, there's a bunch of different customs that they follow. Um, They usually include gift giving, um, visiting the homes of friends uh, and neighbors. Um, And then they um, have, like, special attention is given to what they call the first footing. Um, And that is basically the first guest of the new year. And so this is... Basically, according to Scottish beliefs, the first person who crosses through the threshold of your house after midnight on New Year's Day should be a dark-haired male if you wish to have good luck in the coming year. So, traditionally, these men will come bearing gifts of coal, salt, shortbread, and whiskey, um, which all further... Shortbread, that is so I know. (laughs) Um, but yeah, that like further contributes to the idea of having like good fortune in the new year. Um, the reason it is a dark haired man is because (laughs) back when Scotland was being invaded by the Vikings, the last thing you wanted to see at your doorstep was a light haired man bearing a giant axe. Yep. So today the opposite, (laughs) a dark haired man 
symbolizes opulence and success. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a Viking. <laughs> so Let basically, <laughs> they're just like, you're not a Viking? Cool, we're going to have a good year. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that is actually not the whole like dark haired man, but the idea of like the first person to walk like through your door in the new year is actually kind of like an important thing um, in a lot of different like cultures and countries around the world. Um, it's kind of just like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not premonition that has a negative connotation, but it kind of, like, tells you, like, how your year is going to go sort of thing. is like, mm-hmm. depends on who the first person to walk through your door is. Um, I do have a question that you do not have the answer to, I can guarantee it. Wouldn't the opposite of a blonde-haired man Viking be a dark-haired Scottish woman? Women aren't real. I mean, real. you would think. Women aren't worth anything. <laughs> that is true. She is correct. Um, but yes. How can a woman bring good luck? <laughs> That's true. Uh, that is true. Yes. When we lived in Germany. Uh, I'm just pointing out our... a flaw in the logic. That's all. When we lived in Germany. I, our... Yeah, I agree. Hannah, what? When we lived in Germany, our neighbors were teaching my dad how to make sauerkraut. And yeah. they, you, like, you make it in the basement and it takes forever. Yeah. And yeah. they were like, your wife can't come down here. She'll spoil it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not surprised. Yeah, I mean, that was a big thing with um, (sighs) beer, maybe? Back whenever people... No, because women started with beer. I don't remember, but there's, like, some other, like, staple of some culture or another where it's, like, women can't even look at it because they'll spoil it. Yeah. Or, like, they weren't allowed on ships because it was bad luck. Right. It's bad luck if a woman is on the ship, which is uh, so fucking illogical. We need to go places too, guys. <laughs> right. Like, if you want your new country, can't. if you want to like invade a if new land want... that's not populated, you kind of have to bring a woman if you want to yeah. populate it. I'm just so... think, just saying. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> you uh. can't make children. We can. <laughs> um. But yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Slide <excuse> four. <laughs> Okay, so this is the Netherlands. Um, So they have a tradition of eating. I, honest to God, do not know how to say this word, um, but it is O-L-I-E-B-O-L-L-E-N. So Ollie-Bolen. That's how it's going to be pronounced, and I am so sorry to anyone who lives in the Netherlands because I know (laughs) I said that completely wrong. Uh, the one time I don't look up how to pronounce things. That was my mistake. <laughs> I apologize. I'm trash. Okay. Anyway, so they eat that on New Year's Eve, um, and they are pieces <laughs> of deep fried dough. Um, What's in them? Because uh, I thought they uh, were, like, really sick-looking potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of what they look like. They are basically like donuts. They're donut like balls, and then they can have like different like. like, It might be a raisin. It might be like chocolate chips. Like you can put different like, uh, like sweet things in them. Um, I'm gonna tell myself they're chocolate chips because then I would eat it. But (laughs) it's probably a raisin. I don't know. Could be like cranberries or something weird. I had to explain to a child on Friday what a raisin was, and that it wasn't like a rotten grape. It was just a dried up grape. (laughs) It's just a. Uh, it's he was very shriveled. Old he was like, but is it rotten? And I was like, just, no, it's just dry. It's just shriveled. We just took all the moisture have, out of it. I have have this. Has this child never previously encountered a raisin, or Shannon? did they just forget what they were? Shannon, special I'm just, ed. I'm just wondering. Special ed. No, um, I know, but, but that doesn't they, mean that you don't see raisins. That's no, what I mean. That, I, I said to them, do you know what a raisin is? And they didn't know. And I said, okay, well, here's what a raisin is. That and answered my like, question. <laughs> is it rotten? Rotten. No, it is not. Okay. <laughs> the end. Okay. The gist right. of, like, you could still, you could be in special ed and still eat raisins. Like, that was just my question. It was like, have they okay. ever been fed a raisin before? Like, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck do I know? There's a, but there's a lot a of people where... don't 
well, not a lot of people, but, like, a lot of kids don't know that, like, raisins are grapes. That's true. Yes. And okay. a lot so. of kids with autism don't eat a lot of foods, actually. They just, like... Oh, no, yeah. Like, some of our yeah, programming true. for kids is, like, lick this french fry. Just lick it. <laughs> if you lick it, you can pick a prize. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. I was coming at it in my head. This child had never even been introduced to the concept of a raisin. Gotcha. Which to me just sounded odd. <laughs> In those other contexts, it makes more sense. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So in the Netherlands, they eat these pieces of, f- <laughs> I almost said freeze-dried dough. Deep fried. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> those are two very different things. Deep fried dough. They eat these. People got it like flipped. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, oh, man. Yeah. So they eat these during... Uh, Yule time, um, it's, like, from an ancient Germanic, like, tradition, um, but, so, like, back in the day, basically, and this is not the current belief, it's just a tradition that has, like, been passed down, but back in the day, when ancient Germanic tribes would eat them, um, it was so that the Germanic goddess Perchta, that uh, sounds right. Sure. Um, who was also known as the belly slitter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, it was so that when she came and tried to cut their stomachs open and fill them with trash, the fat from the dough would cause her sword to slide right off. Okay. Why Why would she fill people yeah. with trash? Okay, okay, okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> the reason she would cut their stomachs open and fill them with trash was a punishment for those who hadn't sufficiently partaken in Yuletide cheer. You're a Grinch, what the fuck is so wrong you're gonna with... be filled with trash. <laughs> yeah. The Germanic Germany, tribes. man. <laughs> this Dude. is like the super goth version of a cr- uh, Christmas Carol. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you weren't jolly enough, so here you go. Instead of being haunted We're gonna by three ghosts to you change your and ways. stuff you with trash. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Actually, but yeah, so ghosts. they would they would eat a whole <laughs> bunch of donuts so that they were... So if they hadn't been cheerful enough, they wouldn't be disemboweled. All right. Yep. Love um, that they have a goddess whose weakness <laughs> is fried dough. Love that. <laughs> right. Your sword oh, no. can't the cut only me because I had too many donuts. My yeah. sword can't penetrate as your oily dough. <laughs> <laughs> yep, pretty much. Um, but yeah, nowadays it's just like a tradition that they eat those on New Year's. Um, and a lot of like Dutch food vendors will have them in winter months. I feel like so. Bolin is like a. I'm. I don't know a word for ball but in the context of food because i feel like i've eaten something else bowling before well yeah because they're like donut like balls is what they're described as yeah that's what i'm saying like meatballs yeah or so i don't know yeah that sounds or right that sounds right but i don't know for sure i don't know either so okay slide five <laughs> okay so this is uh russia. one from russia <laughs> yes uh yes sorry with um, that, i just googled it the german slash dutch version of ball is bull it's b and then an o with a hat and then an l <laughs> gotcha so, i don't know the name of the actual symbol you took just, german i didn't encounter this this is dutch <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you said... It, oh, the little the hat. Word. Yeah, the little hat. Okay. The little hat. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head right now. Yeah, and in German, it's Der Ball. <laughs> Der Ball. With a capital B. <laughs> well, it's a noun, so of course. Yes. <laughs> right. Listen, I still yes. <laughs> write like I'm German. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Every noun gets a capital for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, we used to do that in English, and then for whatever reason, we decided to stop. Yeah, and no one told me. We were like, that's too much. No one told you. Oh, man. Sorry. Got distracted by German. Continue with 
Russia. Yes. <laughs> okay, so Russia. Um, so this is, I know there's at least one other Russian one on here. Okay, but this is one of them. So for the past 25 years or so, um, I honestly don't know when this article was written. I didn't look on it. So... <laughs> Could have been we're 25 gonna go years the, ago. Could have been 50. Who knows? <laughs> we're going to go with, well, not 50. The internet hasn't been around. Well, like, actually, yeah, it has. Yeah. God, the internet. Well, and it could have been adapted from, like, a different article. You never know. True. Okay, yeah. anyway, so, or so. <laughs> um, there is a Russian holiday tradition where two divers um, who are at this time, named Father Frost and the Ice Maiden. Um, They will go into Lake Baikal, uh, which is, fun fact, the world's largest freshwater lake. Um, It's the world's deepest freshwater lake. It is. It is. I've been there. Put Uh, my feet in it. uh, That sounds cold. It was very cold. (laughs) All Um, the boys on our trip jumped in, in their underwear. (gasps) Of course they did. did. Um, But yeah, so they will go out to Lake Baikal and they will dive into it with, they will take a New Year tree with them and dive into the water a hundred feet below the surface and... What the fuck? (laughs) And leave the tree there. And it's usually like a spruce tree that they have decorated. Lake Baikal is a mile deep. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the temperature is normally, at, especially at the new year, uh, well below freezing. Like, the yeah, lake because... is frozen over. They have to, like, cut a hole to be able to dive 100 feet deep in the because tree. Because you like, know what they tree. used to do with the train at Lake Baikal? Instead of what? going, because the train goes all the way around the lake, which is fucking huge and it takes forever. They yeah. used to, in the winter, they would just put the train tracks across the tr- the frozen lake yeah. and drive mm-hmm. the train like in the polar express like that's literally what they used to do because yeah. it yeah. was so frozen and frozen so frozen yeah it was frozen yeah so they it's just so take frozen, two divers <laughs> and they cut a hole in the middle of the lake and they're like mm, dive I'm down and you guys leave something a tree else that's in lake by call a picture what is the purpose of this activity russia yeah. I'll accept that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. All right. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Sounds good uh, to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, slide six. So this one is in Brazil. Um, so for New Year's Eve in Brazil, they will, um, like, citizens will go to the shore of, like, the ocean, and Yuki, can you not? Can you please? Okay, fine. Whatever. Do your thing. Um, so (laughs) they will throw white flowers in, and candles into the ocean. Uh, the candles are usually, like, on a little floating thing. They don't just, like, throw a candle into the ocean. I just saw the thing Hannah sent us. What the fuck is that? Uh, it's like these crab oh God, things no, that I've live in Lake Baikal, and they, like, strip the flesh off of anything that dies in there. Oh my They're God. They're horrifying. And this picture does not do justice. They're fucking huge. But yeah. there's Those also would, species. They would be, you know? Like, yeah, they're, um, they're this scary. is why I don't go in bodies of water, okay? But there are also a species of um, seals that only live in Lake Baikal, and they're very fat and very cute. I will find a picture of those. <laughs> There's also okay, I would go on a boat to see a seal. Christmas trees but, uh, at the bottom of the lake too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's fine. good good news for you, Shelby. You don't really have to go anywhere to see them. They are, uh, you can like go into the museum and look at them because they live in a little tank in there. Okay. Yep, I can handle that. They're very cute. I can do that. Here they are. Let me. They're see. very round. <laughs> Because I always love a good seal picture. Oh my god, look at it! It's so chunky! Oh my god, look at this one. Oh my god. Sorry, I love this seals. Is They're so fat. Oh look my at this god. One. Look he at doesn't even face. have a neck. It's just a head coming out of his oh torso. My god. <laughs> I love it. Okay, 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 Sorry. okay. Brazil. Okay, so in Brazil. They uh, will throw white flowers and light candles into the... 
I need to stop saying that they throw candles into the ocean. They don't. <laughs> they throw the flowers into the ocean. They the throw a whole candle right in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Or like a little floating thing. Anyway, um, they do this in order to make offerings to Yamoja? Yamoha? I don't know. I don't speak I don't Portuguese. Uh, uh, let me text Daniel. <laughs> yes. Um, and she is a uh, major... A uh, water deity who is said to control the seas, and so they th- uh, give the flowers and the candles to her as an offering um, to get her blessing for the year to come. Okay. So, uh, slide seven. Uh, okay. This is Italy. <laughs> they have a tradition of wearing red underwear to ring in the new year. Um, in Italian culture, the color red is associated with fertility, and so people wear uh, red underwear um, in the hopes that it will help them to conceive a child in the coming year. Which is also a fairly, um, not necessarily like red underwear, but like wearing red for the new year. I know, I don't know this. I have heard that it is um, like a tradition in China as well. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, like most, like not most, but if I'm remembering correctly, a lot of Chinese New Year decorations are red, correct? Yes, or they are. Red is, uh, red okay. is a very important color in, yeah. um, I don't want to say a lot of like East Asian, but definitely in, in like communist Chinese. communist China. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, like the. Not cool, Hannah. <laughs> um, like when. Uh, people get married, like, the brides will wear red. Um, Mm -hmm. Isn't it, like, bad luck to wear green to your wedding? Because doesn't that mean you're, like, a a lady of the night? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. I I don't know if it's green, but yes, there is a color that you, like, can't wear on your wedding. Um, And white is, like, the color that they wear to funerals, usually. Mm -hmm. Um, Because white symbolizes, like, death. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so red is definitely like a very important color. I do have a question um, for Italy. Yes. So what if you're trying to do the exact opposite of this and ensure that you don't want children? What is the opposite color that you would be wearing? <laughs> uh, they don't have one. You just don't wear red. All right. You're that makes just sense. naked. <laughs> you just naked. <laughs> you just walk around with no clothing on. <coughs> Ugh. You get out there? Yep. Yuki, what the fuck are you doing? <clears throat> you good in there? <laughs> she just, like, sat and licked her butt for, like, five <laughs> minutes and then got up and started, like, trying to tear the carpet up. I think my hair's falling out. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we're all doing great. I hope your hair's not falling out. Yeah, like, literally. We're... Just... Anyway, okay, slide eight. Let's get over this. Let's get this <laughs> over with. <sighs> yes. Okay. Um, slide eight. This is Greece. Um, they will hang onions, um, like in their home, and that's because they believe that onions are a symbol of rebirth, and so they hang them on their doors in order to promote growth throughout the new year. Okay. Um, yeah, that's really it. Why? I'm guessing you copied this. Does the author who wrote this think that vampires are repelled by onions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I read that <laughs> sentence too, and I was like, um, that would be garlic. Because oh, I'm just gonna, for people who are not us and can't see it, it says no. This New Year's Eve tradition has nothing to do with vampires. Yeah, because like onions have nothing to do with vampires. <laughs> Brush up on your vampire facts, you idiot. <laughs> it's right, yeah. Garlic. No, I, I straight up like copy <laughs> and pasted this paragraph. But yeah, no. yeah. Speaking of vampires, yeah. didn't Anne Rice die recently? She, yeah, did. she did. Yeah. Yeah. Like last week, I believe. Right. By the time so. this comes out, it would have been almost a month. So. Yeah. It will have been yeah. last year. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, a lot of uh Fan fiction people are uh, not celebrating, obviously, but she had a habit of suing fan fiction writers, so 
they're not going to get sued anymore. (laughs) I mean... I don't know how I... I think I would be pretty upset if people... I don't know. I I don't know. It would depend. I'm not making a judgment on that one way or another. I'm just stating a lot of people who write fan fiction, especially about the it pe- like the characters from Interview with a Vampire and all of those books yeah. are like, hey, I'm probably not going to get sued anymore for putting Lestat fan fiction on the internet for free. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. Yeah. You know. Yeah. One way or the other. <laughs> okay, slide nine. Uh, this is in Chile. So for New Year's Eve, uh, they're masses are not held at a church they are held in cemeteries um so that people are able to sit with their deceased family members and include them in the new year's eve festivities dude i had mass in a cemetery once it was so metal it was awesome yeah (laughs) i mean the picture that i found of it like it looks really pretty and like it's like a (laughs) (laughs) powderboard um like it looks like a it reminds me of what you, like, pictures you see of, like, Dia de los Muertos. Muertes? Yeah. Muertos. Muertos. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at Spanish. Really bad at it. Um, but yeah. I mean, it, none of us are an authority on anything, so. <laughs> yeah. Why do we talk? <laughs> Honestly. Um, but yeah, it reminds me of like pictures of celebrations of that that you tend to see um just in the like it looks very festive and colorful. Yeah. Um okay. And slide 10. So, uh this is in Japan. So in Japanese culture, it is customary to welcome the new year with a bowl of soba noodles. Uh it in a ritual known as toshikoshi soba or year crossing noodles so nobody really knows where this first came from um but it's believed that the like thin shape and long length of soba noodles is meant to signify a long and healthy life and a lot of people also believe that because soba noodles are made from buckwheat which is like a really resilient plant um, that it is to, like, give them strength in the new year. That was a really mm-hmm. poorly worded sentence that I just said, but you get the point. <laughs> but yes. I like that. Toshi Koshi. Toshi Koshi. Toshi Koshi Soba. That's yes. Cute. <laughs> there are some words in Japanese that are just so fun to say. Like, oh, what is one of them? Like, friend in Japanese is tomodachi, and it's just fun. It's just fun to say. Tamagotchi. Exactly. That's uh, actually part (laughs) of, like, where tamagotchi, the word tamagotchi came from, was the word for friend. Um, But yeah, okay. Oh, Emma Emma said that Brazilian word if you want to know it. Yeah. Okay, ready? Emoja. Emoja. Actually, Daniel said it. Emoja. Emoja. Okay, that's cool. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate ya. Thank you, Daniel, our resident Brazilian. Yes. <laughs> you're great. I don't know you, but you're great. Um, you have to be if you married Emma. Iemanja. Oh, he did it wrong. Iemanja. Iemanja. Fun. Okay. Oh my god, he's already forgetting his native tongue. No! <laughs> <laughs> been in america too long yuki can you not lay on my keyboard why are you like this tonight okay slide 11 talking about denmark uh all right so in denmark they will break plates outside of their home um this is my favorite one so far yes (laughs) honestly sounds like my kind of tradition just break a whole bunch of shit um, so they take pride in the number of broken dishes outside of their door by the end of New Year's Eve. Um, it's a tradition to throw china at your friends and neighbors' front doors on New Year's Eve. Some say it's a means of leaving any aggression and ill will behind before the new year begins. Um, 
and it is said that the bigger your pile of broken dishes, the more luck you will have in the upcoming year. Or the most anger people had at you that they want to get rid of before the new year. Right? Like, (laughs) always the pessimist, Shannon. I swear, though, those dates... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Those dates are having a good time, though, because they live that, like, what's it called? Hugo life. Yeah. Which is what I aspire to do. Honestly, I was living my best Hugo life yesterday. I baked snowflake bread. I made a Dutch baby. I wore socks all day. It snowed. It was fucking great. Yep. Socks all day. <laughs> I was at work. I can't. I got nothing. Um, but, yeah, so they're just running around the streets visiting their friends throwing plates at their door smashing Love some it. china Goodbye, bitch. and they're like i hated you this year Smash a but plate. uh no, next year We're you're going. gonna be okay. real lucky so yeah well isn't there that one in like i don't know if you put this in here but the one in mongolia or something like that where they just like the one day a year you get to fist fight people you had quarrels with and then you're fine the rest of the year yeah it's not in here but yeah there is something like that which honestly okay, like yeah sorry my brain died for a second i was trying to think and that was too much <laughs> um okay slide 12 because apparently i can't form a thought um look at this fun little post-apocalyptic picture here on slide 12 that's freaky. i love it um so this isn't Look at that snowman in the back who's just watching in horror. <laughs> right. He's like, oh, God, I'm next. Um, I'm next. Uh, for those listening, it is a picture of a scarecrow on fire. Um, but this is in Ecuador, um, and their New Year's Eve uh, tradition is to light bonfires, and at the center of each of these bonfires is um, an effigy uh I don't know. The article said it was like burning a scarecrow, but they are technically effigies, most often representing politicians, pop culture icons, and other figures uh, from the year prior. Um, and so it is basically burning away like the old year, essentially. Um, and they do this at the end of every year to cleanse the world of all the bad from the past 12 months and make room for the good to come. Why is it of politicians and celebrities if it's that, like, general of a reason? Because um... that could be for anybody, you know? It could just be, like, generic scarecrow effigy thing. Right, but, but I wonder, and because I didn't, like, look that deeply like into it, I wonder if it's, like people like especially with like politicians necessarily of like yeah like, people who like made bad decisions or like did something that you didn't like or like the kardashians wrong right <laughs> let me just burn an effigy of the kardashians every year um yeah so i don't i don't necessarily know why it is like f- okay. prominent figures from the prior year um yeah like I said, I didn't really look into it, uh, but that would be interesting to know, for sure. Uh, if you're from Ecuador, let us know. Hit us up. Let us know. Uh, slide. I don't think we've had any downloads 13. in Ecuador. So let's go. Okay. Um. So this is another one from Greece. Um. So in Greek mythology, pomegranates. Uh, symbolize fertility, life, and abundance, and so the fruit has come to be associated with good fortune in modern Greece. So just after midnight on New Year's Eve, which would then make it New Year's Day, but whatever, um, it is customary for Greeks to smash a pomegranate against the door of their house, and it is said that the number of pomegranate seeds that end up scattered is directly correlated with the amount of good luck to come in the new year. Isn't there something with the Hades and... Is it Persephone? Hades and Persephone. Yeah, because she ate the pomegranate yeah, seeds and it was. She ate like yeah. six seeds and that's why she had to send six months with him every year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't pomegranates remember. Pomegranates are like the myth. most impossible fruit to enjoy. Yeah. I don't like pomegranate. They're so tedious. I don't mind. Like, I don't like the flavor. I don't mind like <laughs> pomegranate juice. Not that I drink anything remotely related to a fruit because i hate fruit um 
You live off of crayon apple juice. What are I you know. talking about? I know. <laughs> it's I, why I don't have scurvy. Um. <laughs> I ordered two DoorDash deliveries today because CVS was out of orange juice and then Rite Aid was out of orange juice and I didn't feel good and I didn't want to go anywhere and neither of them had orange juice what the fuck? and nah. I was just so sad and I was like you know what don't even bother <laughs> the only time I drink don't orange juice is if I am sick because that is the only time that I crave I know because my body yeah my body is craving it right now like all day I was like all I want is orange juice just give me some effing orange juice right and I literally I will not C, but drink it any other suit. time um, no, but Shannon is correct. I do, my, like, bloodstream is basically crayon apple juice at this point. Um, like, it's that, like, I didn't have to buy two last time, but she kind of like, did have I'm to get one. She'll go through a bottle in like three days if she's home. Honestly, like an entire honestly, bottle. like if I have a day off, I will go through an entire like bottle of crayon apple juice in a day. Uh, yeah. but because I am working right now, um, for like extended hours every day, I am not going through as much, but yeah, it is a problem. It's you because know, I don't drink can, water. So you can bring a water bottle full of crayon apple juice to work. Um, yeah. I do regularly. Um, okay. Just... but also it's like really dehydrating. <laughs> it like makes my mouth really dry. Yeah, cranberry is... juice. The, the tartness of the cranberry really yeah. dries you out. Great to be the only thing that you drink ever is something that dehydrates you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, hi. Hello, coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I know. No, I literally <laughs> drink tea and cran apple juice. Oh, my God. And always. that's, like, it. <laughs> and your blood and is, And I like wonder dust. why I have headaches. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Why can't my dust blood get to my brain? <laughs> right. Um, but I've never had scurvy, and I will never have a UTI. That's not the flex you think it is. <laughs> you know what? Like... <laughs> You're talking to, like, one of the few people in the 21st century who you can actually say that to. Them. I know. So, full offense. Full like fucking said, offense. Okay? It's not the flex you think it is. <laughs> it's not. Talk to anyone on the street, and I bet you none of them have had scurvy. It's just me. I know. I know. <laughs> you and that one random guy on TikTok <laughs> that yes, I stumbled me and the across. Man on TikTok. <laughs> and the few pirates who are out there, you know who you yes. are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could go suck on a lemon downstairs. <laughs> Let me see. I do have lemons. Yeah. No, I am well aware that I am trash uh, in the way that I consume food and drink. Okay, I am well aware. It's fine. Anyway, slide 14. Shannon, I'm going to need your German knowledge because this is another German one and oh, there is God. a word in here written Blankishin in German that I don't know. Is um, going to be my best guess there. <laughs> works for me. Close enough. Um, yeah, Blagishen is going to be my best because that's a... That's funny looking. Yeah. Me is basically like a double S, yeah. if I remember correctly. Right. Like Go with Blagashen. That's probably uh, wrong, but that's okay. the best I can do. Okay. Might be Blagashen. We're going to call it sin. close no, and H. apologize for the fact that none of us speak German. Okay. Nope. Ich habe eine große Puppe so you can shut the hell Okay. Thank you for. Isn't that just like I have a cat or something? I have a big purple cat. I have a big Shannon. purple cat. Thank you. <laughs> you said it too fast, so I heard Ikaba and then Katza, and I was like, "That's I have cat. That's all I got." Ikaba, I know gross purple katza. Yeah, I know blue kukunus. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is a tradition in Germany. Um, da, da, da. and that word that Shannon said, uh, stands for lead pouring. And so basically they will use the flames from a candle and each person will melt a small piece of lead or tin and pour it into a container of cold water. And the shape that the lead, um, or tin forms is said to reveal a person's fate for the upcoming year. So. That is so stupidly German. Gas around, children, will be pouring the lead to see what your fortune is. <laughs> Isn't there, like, yeah, a... Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, in a way. 
Yeah. Isn't there one that you like crack an egg into some water and that that shape determines like shells like in the future? I don't remember. <laughs> There's something with eggs and you crack it into some liquid and the shape will tell you your future. It's from like the 1800s in like so. prairie America. I don't remember I mean, what it is. Maybe. I read Willa Cather. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of like reading tea that leaves and stuff like Antonia. that. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, it is interesting. It's a weird one, but kind of cool in a way. Oh, I just Googled it. It's called Ovomancy. <laughs> I hate that. I'm like, I, yep, don't like uh, that. The shapes that a separated egg white forms when dropped into hot water. So, ha. And okay, then the next hot sentence. water. <laughs> yeah. I thought well, it I was couldn't like... remember what liquid it was. I thought it was like cold water. I was like, it's just going to be egg. round like an <laughs> yeah. egg. No, hot water. And then the next sentence on Wikipedia, this method greatly resembles molten lead divin- divination. Not divination, divination. Oh, well. So it's the same. There you go. I don't know how saying, the fuck I know this. I'm not saying it's it's interesting. What I'm saying is it just it's so German for like, this is what we'll do for fun <laughs> yeah. on New Year's. This is how I know this. The, uh... Salem witch trial accusers did this oh. before they started accusing people of witches. That's how I know that. Interesting. Okay. Fucks. okay. I knew I knew it from something, but I couldn't remember what exactly. So not uh, prairie exactly, but I was close. <laughs> no, that's like the opposite of the prairie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's New England. You yeah. know, it's fine. <laughs> um, all right, slide 15. We are almost done. There are 20 slides i think um okay so slide 15 this is japan um and so on new year's eve uh buddhist temples in japan will ring their bells 108 times um so basically it's like 107 times on new year's eve and then one time right as the clock strikes midnight so, this tradition is known as, uh, Joyanokane. Joya, yeah, Joyanokane. Um, and it is meant to dispel the 108 evil desires in each and every person and cleanse the previous year of past sins. And can confirm they do this. It is loud. That's it is cool. That's very specific. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's cool to go and, like, witness it. But yeah, very specific. I don't know what those 108 evil desires are. I assume it is something Buddhist. Uh, Yeah, I would assume so. But yeah. Also, that is a lot of times to ring those bells, because if you look in this picture, those bells are fucking massive. Like, fucking massive. Um, But yeah. Okay, slide 16. This is another one from Russia. They drink ashes on New Year's Eve. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes um they also chase vodka with fish like yeah fish. <laughs> so, because russia. russia um so it is basically they will write their wishes for the new year down on a piece of paper uh burn it burn the paper with a candle and then drink the ashes from that paper in a glass of champagne okay so no caviar involved <laughs> no. Not this time. Uh, But yeah. (laughs) So, Russia. Uh, Slide 17. This is the Czech Republic. Um, So, they use an apple to predict their future fortunes on New Year's Eve. The night of New Year's Eve, they will cut an apple in half, and the shape of the apple's core is said to determine the fate of everyone surrounding it. So, if the apple's core resembles a star then everyone will soon meet again in happiness and health. But if it looks like a cross, then someone at the New Year's Eve party should expect to fall ill soon. (laughs) So. That's a wide variety of options there. (laughs) Yes. Or like they're they're different extremes. It's like you all are going to be really happy or one of you. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Also, like what if it doesn't look like a... But you're going to be happy about it. But what if it doesn't look like a yeah. star or a cross? <laughs> like, what are the other options? That looks like a circle. Exactly. Yeah. Like, this is just a random Google image. But, like, what does yeah. that represent? Don't know. 
And like, does the type of apple matter? I don't know. Again, did not look that far into it. What kind of apples do they have over there? In the Czech Republic? Also, that? I don't know. Hey, if you're Czech, hit us up. <laughs> yeah. We've got some questions yes. about apples. <laughs> Specifically New Year's Eve apples. Uh, slide 18. This is Estonia. Would apples even be in season? Sorry. <laughs> like, would apples I even mean, be in season? It depends. You can save apples. Yeah, and it depends yeah. on their, like, what they're growing, uh... I don't know exactly what the, like, climate is in the Czech Republic. Oh my god, let's not ask any questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. Slide 18. <laughs> Estonia. Um, so they basically just eat a shit ton of meals for New Year's Eve. Um, right, they like will eat, do. like, seven, nine, or, like, twelve meals on New Year's Eve. Um, to bring about good things in the year to come, seeing as those numbers are considered lucky throughout the country. Lots of places do this on Christmas, too. Yeah. It, or it's like you have to have a certain number of dishes for Christmas. Like for Poland, it's like you have to have nine or twelve Yeah, it's, you know, dishes on the table. I mean, most countries have like a lucky number and an unlucky number and things like that. And so, um, like... Polish's unlucky number is... Russia. Yes, that is true. Did you say Polish's unlucky number. Yes, I'm in Poland. I'm very tired, <laughs> and my head is full of mucus. <sighs> my brain is being crushed. That's okay. Whenever we were in like seventh or eighth grade, one of our friends forgot that Poland was a country. Dude, oh I my god, I remember. That. I didn't even know her. I didn't know her at the time. Oh my god. No, you were not in our state at the time. Uh. Oh, yeah. gosh. She referred to a country called Polasia, and we were like, what the fuck are... Well, I mean, we didn't say fuck, because we were in, like, seven. Right. But we were like, what are you we talking like, about? Where else would Polish sausages come from? And I was like... Poland? Poland? Like, what are you talking Shannon, about? Not only was she making up a country, she was also racist to that made-up country. Because <laughs> you said that... She said that she didn't like people from Polasia. Yes, <laughs> she did. So not only, not <laughs> only did, ooh, I just kicked Okay, she head. also in high school told me that I was racist for saying that African Americans celebrate Kwanzaa, and like that only African Americans celebrate Kwanzaa, and I was like, but it is a holiday that celebrates African Americans. I'm sorry, are you Pan-African over there, white girl? <laughs> so, well, that's and the she thing, is like, fuck. my aunt celebrates it, and I was like, Why? <laughs> She is the like, whitest of all racist. white girls. Like, I was what like, the that fuck? is not a racist statement. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Okay. So, that was. Oh, boy. wow. You're so anti Semitic because you don't celebrate Hanukkah. Yeah. What's wrong I was with like, you? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, it was me saying that, like, only African Americans celebrate it. And I was like, I mean, I'm sure that there are, like, non African Americans who, like, maybe are friends with them or. They're married to an African-American person, so they celebrate it. But, like, I don't see any instance where a white person would genuinely celebrate it's not, Kwanzaa. It's not for you. Stop trying exactly, to make it about it's you. It's not for you. you. It's like, but I was in, like, a sophomore You can be high respectful school, about so it, I didn't but have you don't... the language oh, to articulate that. But it was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, she was also in on the... Thing freshman year oh where they told God. me that another one of our friends died in a car accident. Yeah, so. that whole yeah <laughs> bullshit. Ugh. And then they got mad at me for yelling at them about it. Yeah. Yeah, Shannon, don't be such a dick when you think your friend is dead. Jeez. No, literally, that's basically, they were like, we were just kidding. I was like, you told me she's died over text message. And then, What is wrong with you? Like, because Shannon, like, called or texted me about it, and, like, so I tried calling them and was like, what the fuck is going on? And they hung up on me, like, three times, and when I finally did get a hold of them, I was like, hey, what's going on? And they literally just, like, laughed and then hung up on me again. And I was like, you yep. cannot do that. Like, that is yeah. not okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and then the next day they were trying to, like, they were talking to other people, making it seem like I was the crazy one for getting mad at them, and everyone was like, what is wrong with you? Right. <laughs> you told her that her friend died. What is wrong with you? 
can you believe that she was upset about something like that? <laughs> exactly! <laughs> God, Shannon, how dare you be upset? Well, and I think I, what did I say? I said something that they really didn't like. I think I said they were all being bitches or something. Yeah. Because they were. And they were like, I cannot believe you would say that to me. That's so rude. And I was like, huh? (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, then maybe you shouldn't. That's like, that's not a prank phone call. That is straight up (laughs) just like, that's not a prank. Okay. That is you being a bitch. No, it's not a prank. Or a joke. Like, that's just yeah, being an that asshole. Yeah, that is not something maybe we joke about. Maybe I called them an about. asshole. I don't... Maybe I called them assholes. I don't remember what I called them. It doesn't. Um, but they yeah. got offended. Yeah, ass once. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. On accident. I did that on accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Hannah. And I called you a dumb ass. <laughs> a dumb ass. Well, I knew ass was involved. <laughs> Hannah, you know we love you. I made a left-hand <laughs> turn or something. I don't know. No, anyway. we were leaving... We were leving the parking oh garage God. at Missouri State, and we needed one of the streets. And we were going toward the correct street, and then Can you panicked. Can I just say something? <laughs> and turned. All of the streets where we were were named after trees. They were. So I was a little confused. <laughs> yeah. But we were headed toward the one we needed, and you panicked to change. And so I said, Hannah, quit being a dumbass. And then you got really mad. <laughs> and you called me a dumbass in my own car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right. valid. Okay. We only have, like, two, three more. <laughs> Um, okay, okay. <laughs> so also in Estonia, they eat like seven, nine, or 12 meals. Oh my god, I have to sneeze. Um, but it's okay if you don't eat all of the food because they purposely leave food on their plates to feed their visiting family members who visit in spirit form. So to oh. say their past, their. What? Huh? The ghost. The ghost. The, the, ghost, the, the ghost of their family members. God, I my brain yeah. died in the middle of a thought. Okay. Slide 19. People who aren't there but are there, invisible, yes. but you can't see them because they are not there because it's not time for them to be there anymore. Yes. For some reason, oh my, my brain God. was like, don't okay. say they're dead family members. And I was like, but that's what they are. Okay, anyway, slide 19, Armenia. Um, so they will bake bread on New Year's Eve and they add a special ingredient into their dough and that ingredient is luck. Um. Spit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, so obviously like luck's not a real ingredient, um, but it is a tradition for them to like basically like basically need good wishes um and whatnot into every batch of bread that they bake on the last day of the year so cool slide 20 this is turkey um obviously the country not the picture i was was also saying this is salt salt. (laughs) (laughs) this picture is of salt yes um (laughs) this is a turkey it's made of wood (laughs) And filled with salt. <laughs> and filled with salt. That's the oh stuffing. Um, so, this is... Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a major Taylor Swift fan. Um, it's a thing. It's fine. Where it's whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, it is a joke amongst, like, people <coughs> on Tumblr. Like, the Taylor Swift, like, the Swifty community on Tumblr. Um, because she was promoting one of her albums and I don't even remember what the event was, but there was something about like, um, like a live stream and like, she wasn't even part of it. It was like some, I don't know, like her record label or something, but the lady who was hosting this live stream, um, she was like reading off comments and stuff, um, from like the participants. And at one point, Someone in the comments said, um, like, I'm from Turkey or whatever. And the lady hosting it was like, is Turkey your name or your country? And so, like, (laughs) it is now this, like, huge joke amongst, like, the people who are, like, major Taylor Swift fans. Because obviously, like, casual fans are not going to know that. But anyway, so... Or just, like, the general public. Right, yeah. That's not a thing. (laughs) Yeah, that as well. But every time I see, like, anything about, like, the country of Turkey, I just think of that. And 
yeah, it just cracks me up every time because I'm always like, is Turkey your country or your name? Um, but anyway, this is uh, the New Year's Eve tradition from the country of Turkey. Um, so it is considered good luck to sprinkle salt on your doorstep as soon as the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Day. Um, and this one is said to promote both peace and prosperity throughout the new year. So. That's nice. <laughs> okay, last one. Slide 21. This is Ireland. Just for you, Hannah. Um, Aaron, go bro. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so in Ireland, it is customary for single women to sleep with a sprig of mistletoe underneath their pillow on New Year's Eve. Um, supposedly, this will help them to find their f- husband in the year to come. At least uh, in their dreams, it will help them to find their husband. I don't know if mistletoe is anything like Spanish moss, but this just seems like a scam by lice to get lice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, when we were little, we were like, let's put Spanish moss in our hair. My mom would always, like, slap it out of her hands and be like, no, it has lice! I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know <laughs> what mistletoe's deal is, but it is another parasitic it is. thing, like Spanish moss, so that's why I bring that up. Yes. <laughs> um, Brought to you by lice. But, yeah, supposedly they'll, like, dream of their question. future husband. and it, I have a question. Yeah. What if they are not straight? <laughs> well, then it'll Is be their only future. Thing for straight women. <laughs> well, I don't. Have know. you ever seen the video? There are no gays in Ireland. <laughs> I have you ever seen that video. Yeah. I assume <laughs> that. Really uh, I mean, I'm sure back in the day it was only for husbands because that was the only thing that was like socially acceptable or like legally allowed. Right. But I nowadays I am going to assume <laughs> that it is Gay that they will dream Ireland. of their future partner. There we go. Um, <laughs> there are no geese in Ireland. <laughs> um, but yeah. So those are just this a small. What? It's a scam by lice to get lice. <laughs> Brought to you by the Irish Council on Lice. <laughs> yes. Um. Oh man. But yeah, so that is just a small sprinkling of some of the New Year's traditions from around the world. There you go. Obviously, there are many more (laughs) because there are way more than uh, 18 countries. But yeah, what? Or cultures. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. I was I've been watching Monty Python again because I'm sad and need something happy. And it's very (laughs) funny. And they were doing. um, I don't know. It was like the it was like the stupid Olympics or something. And. Um, they're like, there are people here from over four million countries. <laughs> Never mind. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> we probably need context. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. It was just from, it was like from four million countries. And I was like, wait a minute. That's, that's not a real lie. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> You're being funny. <laughs> you oh, with your man. jokes. <laughs> you with your British sense of humor. <laughs> Um. Oh man. Yeah. So that's all I've got for you. My uh, okay. my goal for the New Year's topic was not a bummer. So this was most decidedly not a bummer. I'm so thank you for that. Glad. I mean, it's not like super in depth into anything, but I was like, it's appropriate it's for the topic. Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, oh. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. I hope everyone has a When this comes out, good New Year. it'll be 2022, which sounds made up. That's not but... real life. I don't know about you, but it's 2022. Fun fact, <laughs> she is actually uh, releasing merch that says I'm feeling 2022. Oh. So there you go. Wait, no, I can't capitalize on that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be able to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that'll be blatant copyright infringement, but okay. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm feeling 22. I'm saying I'm feeling 2022. It's not copyright. True. Those are just words, Shannon. Those are just numbers. I feel like Taylor Swift and her team would beg to disagree in court. <laughs> yeah, she'd sue me I mean, it's probably <laughs> copyrighted <laughs> now since she made merch for it. It might not have been before, but... 
Well, and it's a very... We don't need to get into copyright. Yeah, we're anyway, not talking about I'm that. I'm treating this like it's a hypo on a law final. Like, no, we don't need to do that. Listen, I'll just melt some <laughs> lead melt and ask some it if lead and tell it's it. legal or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this a crime? The lead says no. I'll crack an egg and see what that one says. <laughs> and the lice told me I could do it. <laughs> my lice They're husband my told team. me I could. Your lice husband. She said her lice husband. Oh, I thought you said this. Your lice husband told I could. <laughs> no, <laughs> my lice husband told me yes. I could. You he said a horse instead of a horse toe. yesterday, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> all right, all of us need sleep. You said sleep horse and instead of horse. <laughs> I definitely said horse. You guys are gin herbs. Uh, we'll find Go out what she edits. Audio. There's an S in there. Yeah, when I edit, I'll find out. Um... <laughs> Okay, okay, anyway, we're we done. done um, <laughs> our ending is that we have no ending. Uh, long live the emperor. Goodbye. Long live. Okay, goodbye. Yeah, happy New Year. Yeah, happy New God Year. Damn it. <laughs> oh, boy. Thanks for listening to The Triad. Our music is by Scott Buckley. Our audio is recorded by our sound engineers, Craig Bott and Audrey Credo. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, YouTube, and Tumblr as The Triad Podcast. We're also on Patreon as The Triad. Currently, all Patreon funds will go towards the cost of hosting the show. Each tier has its own rewards, but every patron receives our undying gratitude. Do you have comments, questions, or stories? Email us at thetriadpod at gmail.com. And thank you again for listening to The Triad, where we're spooky but sensitive.